In this video, we're going to take a look at a legal problem called maximum length of repeated subarray. So given two integer arrays nums1 and nums2, return the maximum length of a subarray that appears in both arrays. So you can see here we have an example 1. So we have nums1, which is this array right here, and nums2 is this array right here. So the output is 3 because you can see the repeated subarray with maximum length is 3 to 1. So we have 3 to 1 here and we also have 3 to 1 right here, right? So in this case, the maximum length uh, of conse consecutive repeated subarray is basically 3, right? And let's say we have a, another example like this. You can see we have all the elements, right? We can have duplicate elements, right? All the elements are the same. So in this case, the longest uh, consecutive length of repeated subarray is basically just going to be five, right? We have five zeros here and five zeros here. So in this case, the constraints is that we're guaranteed that elements are always going to be positive, and the length of the array is between one to one thousand. So in this case, how can we be able to solve this problem? Well, let's say we have a example like the first one right here. So let's say we have one, two, three, two, one, and then we have. 3, 2, 1, 4, 7, right? So let's say we have those two arrays. So this is in 1, right? And this is in 2. So we have nums1, nums2, okay? And then in this case, you can see here, um, basically what we can do is that we can solve this problem using a brute force approach by simply saying that this is the pointer, right? Our current pointer is pointing at the first element in N2. We're trying to find 3 in N1, right? In this case, we have 1, which is right here. And what we can do is that we can basically slide our window uh, one to the right, one by one, try to figure out what's the maximum length uh, consecutive repeated subarray, right? So you can see here we have a three here, we have a two here, right? On both sides, we have a one, we have a one, and then the next pointer is out of bound. So in this case, the maximum that we can find is three, right? So you can see the maximum that we can find for this position is three. So in this case, maybe we can keep track of that using a variable, right? And then we can move on to the next element in this case is two, but you notice that there are two twos in N1, so maybe we can start here. Okay, the next element is three, the next element is one. So, so far we've seen the longest is, is one, right? For this value, for this value position right here. And then we try with two. Okay, so those two are the same. And then, and, and then one, right? So we move one to the right, so they're all the same. And then we move one to the right. So you can see here, uh, we basically go out of bound, right? So you can see here, this is, this is it, right? We, we found two. Two is still smaller than three, so therefore you can see we're getting, um, you know, we're getting three so far, right? And then you can see we move on to the next element, which you can see here, which is one. There are two ones, right? So we start with one, the next element is two, this element is four. They don't equal each other, so what we're going to do is we're going to choose another one, right? So, so far we have one, the longest for this position is one. So this one right here is also going to be one, right? So you can see here, um, if we were to solve this problem using this kind of approach, right? Worst case scenario, all the elements are the same. In this case, we have to go with each and every single position, right? So this was this, this was this zero, and this was this zero, and this was this zero, and so on. And for, for each of those positions, we also have the slider pointers across to figure out what's the maximum length of you know, repeated subarray. So in this case, you can see if we were to solve this problem using this kind of approach, right? In this case, let's say we have, you know, it's going to time complexity is going to be big O of N, N1, right? The size of N1 times the size of N2, right? Because for each and every single element in N2, we, we find that element in N1. And then what we also have to do is we have to slide our pointer across the uh, both array, right? So for example, like this three right here, in this case, we have to slide our pointer across both array in this case it's going to be the minimum right the min out of n1 or n2 right so you can see here the time complexity is n1 times n2 times the minimal length between n1 or n2 so now you know like what's the worst case right so now we know we know the worst case is basically going to be like this right n1 times n2 times the minimum out of those two right so how can people to you know, optimize the time complexity, right? So in this case, you can see here, we have a lot of duplicate com computation because you can see here when we are visiting three, right? We want to know what, we want to know what's the maximum length of the repeated subarray at this position, right? That's what we want to get at this position, right? So in this case, you can see we slide our window or slide our win uh, pointers across the array, 
right? So we have two and then we have the one, but you can see here we already know what's the maximum length of repeated subarray at this position, because in this case you can see it's already, right, at this position it's already two because we already visit one, right? One has one uh, longest length of repeated subarray. At this point, two is has two, right? So in this case you can see we already have uh, computed for two, right, for the remaining subarray already. So in this case, why do we need to compute that again, right? So in this case, uh, what we have to do instead is basically what we have to do is we just have to calculate it once and then be able to cache this result uh, using like some kind of 2D array, just similar to what we did in the longest common subsequence, right? And then basically we're comparing, so, so treat it as like a subsequence, right? So subsequence, we're basically comparing this subsequence with this, right? Oh, they're the same. Let's try, let's check with the remaining, right? If they're not the same, like for example, in this case, like for example, this one, right? If they're not the same, right? We're maybe trying with this subsequence with this subsequence, right? Or maybe if, if we can also try with this subsequence, comparing with this subsequence, right? We're basically trying with all the options, right? But the thing is for this question is that we're not dealing with subsequence, we're dealing with subarray. Right, but let's do a refreshment of what is longest common subsequence real quick. So I find this question to be very similar to the longest common subsequence with some slight variation of change, but it's very, very similar. If you haven't checked out my other video called longest common subsequence, I highly recommend to check out that video first before this one. So what's the, what's the difference between the longest common subsequence approach compared to the current problem solutions approach? So in this case, I'm gonna show you with this example right here. So let's say we have two arrays, right? We have 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, and we have 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Okay, so you can see here we have our DB table, and let's say we're gonna solve this problem using the, let's say we're trying to find the longest common, uh, or longest common uh, consecutive subarray, right? Using the approach that we did in the longest common subsequence. In this case, for the top-down approach, this is what we're doing, right? First, what we're gonna do is, as you can see here, if I start to run, you can see, first, what we're trying to see is that we know those two elements, they don't equal each other, right? So one, one, they do equal each other. So what we do is we check the remaining array, right? Basically, you can see here, we're basically trying to see what's the longest uh, common, uh, you know, common subsequence, right? In this case, the longest common subsequence for the remaining array, which is from index zero to index three, right? So you can see that those two elements right here, they don't equal each other. So what do we do for longest common subsequence? In this case, what we do is we, we basically do a DFS uh, to compare this longest, com or in this case, this subsequence with this subsequence right here, right? You can see here is 011 with 1010, right? So in this case, we, are gonna, we know that those two doesn't equal each other. So in this case, we know also that, know that those two doesn't equal each other, right? We can go with different path. You can see this is our DFS, right? And then we know that those two equal each other. So zero, right? Zero in this position, zero with one, zero, one, zero is one, right? So we know that those two equal each other. So we have one so far. And then you can see this is basically how we find this, the longest subsequence, right? Basically to find the longest subsequence, what we're basically trying to do here is we're trying to figure out what's the longest common subsequence that we have seen so far at this current position, right? That we have seen so far at this current position, not the consecutive. So let me just continue to play this so you get an idea, right? So you can see we're basically doing the DFS. Once we hit the base case, it will return back our answer, right? And then we continue to update our branch. And at the end, you can see we're getting three, but the result for this example should be two. Why? Because you can see 0, 1 is right here, right? You can see inside this two array, the only two common things that they have is 0 and 1, right? Those 0, 1 and this 0, 1, they're, they're the same and as well as they're, so they're the, the same uh, common subarray, right? Or you can say this 0, 1 with this 0, 1 right here, right? So they're the same. So in this case, the, the result should be 2. But the thing is, we're getting 3 because you can see here at this 1, those two ones, right? If we were to revert back, you can see this one right here is one, right? Those two ones are equal to each other. So what we're doing is we're basically trying to see, uh, you know, the, what's the longest common subsequence, right? What's the longest common subsequence for the remaining subsequence, right? From index zero to index three, right? So in this case, you can see we have zero one 
and this is zero one right here. So that's why at this position, the longest common subsequence at this position, right, is two. So in this case, um, to solve this problem, right, to figure out the longest or the maximum length of the common subarray, right, which is have to be consecutive. So what we have to do instead is basically we have to figure out what's the, for each and every single cell that we compute in our DB table, right? We wanna figure out what's the longest common subarray at the current position, not what we have seen so far, right? So let me show you an example with a simpler example right here. So you can see that one and two, they don't equal each other, right? So in this case, what's the longest common uh, subarray, common subarray at this position? In this case, it's zero, right? It's not what we have seen so far, it's what we have now. So, and then here, in this case, one, one, they equal each other. So what we do is we check the remaining, right? So it's gonna be one plus the remaining, which is two an empty string. In this case, is zero, right? So at this position, it's just one. Here, what's gonna happen is two and one. Two and one, they don't equal each other. So at this position, it's gonna be two. We don't worry about if it's one with this one right here or comparing if, we don't worry about if it's this subarray comparing with this subarray or if it's this subarray comparing with this, right, or empty. In this case, we're not. We don't care about that because we care about if, if the current position, they don't equal each other, then there's, there. Uh, in this case, at this position, uh, the maximum length of common subarray is not, right? So at this position, you can see here two, two. So two is equal to each other. So in this case, it's gonna be one plus the remaining, which is zero, right? Remaining is zero. So in this case, it's gonna, just gonna be one. Here is going to be two and one, so in this case they don't equal each other. So right away it's going to be zero. Here they do equal each other, so it's going to be what? It's going to be two, right? Two and two they, they do equal each other, so it's what we have remaining. In this case is just one, right? We know that at the remaining in this case is one, right? Because you can see here one and one, right? In this case, if we're comparing those two subarray, we have one two and one two. They're equal to each other, right? So in this case, what we have is two, right? And we also have a variable called max to keep track of the maximum length that we have seen so far. So, so far we have seen ones, right? But then we also have two, right? Two is also larger than one, so we replace max with two, right? So in this case, this is what we are returning. We're returning the maximum length of common subarray. So maximum length, maximum length uh, subarray, right? Subarray is always consecutive. So in this case, the length, the max length of, uh, max length of sub array in this case is basically two right so then we continue so we have two and one two and one they don't equal each other so we have continue one one they do equal each other so what's going to happen is we're just going to have one plus what we have remaining right what we have remaining is two and one two 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 they equal each other we already compute that is one so we take that value one plus one is two right and at this position you can see one and two they don't equal each other so right away we just put two because the maximum length subarray at this current position is zero right because one and two doesn't equal each other there's no way we can find the max or we can find the max length of subarray so it's going to be zero so what we basically see is that you can see we basically uh compute the table right and then the max length subarray is basically just going to be two and that's what we're returning at the end you can see here this is our code all right so we basically create a 2d cache array and then we have a max variable to keep track of the maximum length right the maximum length of repeated uh, uh subarray right so you can see here we basically iterate each and every single row right for each and every single column we get the current element right for those two elements we check to see if they're the same if they are the same now what we do is we basically check the remaining uh, subarray to see if they're they're the same or or what's the longest right if I want to figure out what's the longest or the map what's the the maximum length or in this case yeah the maximum length of the current position right the maximum length of repeated subarray for the current position I need to know the remaining elements plus the current element because the current elements are the same right this will give us the maximum length right of the repeated elements at the current position and then what we do is that we basically compare that with the max value whoever has the max value will be the new max value for this variable and at the end we're basically returning the max value right so you can see this is how we solve the problem so this will reduce the time complexity to uh simply n times m right or nums n1 times n2 right so this is basically how we solve the problem so there you have it thank you for watching